All right, guys. So my name is Kojo Sheldon. The head is big for a reason. And on this episode of Convo with the Head, I have a very special guest here with me. We are going to have a conversation about Ghana movies, uh, um, theater stage, you know, play, and a lot of things, you understand. And um, her test for gym equipment. Yes, I've been... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been following her. And sometimes I go to her page, I look at the things she's doing with regards to uh gym, and I go like, nah, bro, Sheldon, this can't be your life. Because how can you live like this? So, yes, um, today I'm here with um Na Ashoko Mensa Doku. But before I even proceed to talk about what we are coming to talk about, I have a bar. You have a bar? Yes, I have What's a bar. What's your bar? So you see. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> your beauty has shocked me. Do you know how we will call you? Nah, no. Ashoko. I like it. Anyway, um, Nah, Ashoko. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How would you me. rate my bar, though? 10 over 10. Nah, you, nah, no, please. 10 no. over 10 Be minus honest. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway you are welcome to the show thank you so much how is everything everything is great yeah, yeah. you just i mean you hosted they just ended with from ghana music award yes i how, was on stage how was it it was nice mm. yeah i haven't been on vgmas i think in eight years okay so it was nice to be back mm. okay so um but before we proceed to talk about why uh we did here you know, um i've been following you for a very long time how long oh about four years okay yes and i've seen you you know enter the gym and do a lot of things i want to know the motivation because i have <laughs> tried listen i've tried okay i have talked to people i have been on di <laughs> diet plan whatever <laughs> i go to the gym one day i come and sit here and the next i'll be in the, uh, the gym the next month so oh. i don't know what is what really be the issue with me but you go you go to the gym i see you jogging around like how how are you doing it? i don't understand <laughs> what is the motivation i want to know well it's less motivation and more consistency i'm more concerned about waking up every day and doing it than looking for motivation to do it mm. yeah I, should i say some more yes you have to say more. <laughs> okay so here's the thing mm -hmm. i think for many people motivation is like a dream i want mm. i'm looking for this mm. motivation to do a thing mm. whereas for me consistency is a decision to wake up every day and do the thing okay all right so i woke up one day i think sometime in secondary school i joined the cadet and when you're a member of the cadet you go jogging it's not cadet it's cadet yeah Damn, bro. <laughs> so, you go you go jogging we go hiking i went to bencom secondary school uphill just here okay. so we, we we went jogging chasing looking for waterfalls mm. looking for our own routes in the bushes mm. i found that it did more for me than just exercise you find that if you work out consistently the benefits that you get include a clear mind mm. your mental health is improved okay. the physical benefits are just a bonus okay. but your overall well-being it's, it's sort of boosted you feel mm. better in your mind in your body in your soul mm. you're actually more productive well i'm more productive when i work out okay. so i found that in secondary school mm. and i decided that this is something i wanted to keep doing okay. so after secondary school maybe when i came home on, home on vacation i lived at teshin Triblo. i'll jog from my house to la scala do you know teshin uh, I know Teshi, okay. but I don't know. So I'll jog from Chiblo, last stop, the total filling station, mm. all the way to La Scala every single day. And it was fun. It was nice. And there, were day, there are days when I don't feel like doing it. There are days when I feel too tired, body mm. pain, tired, sleepy. I'd rather sleep because sleeping is nice. But because of the commitment that I have made to myself to be consistent, so, I wake up and I do okay. it. So this, this, this didn't start when you gave birth, right? No. Okay. So high school, since high school. Yeah, I, I started in secondary school. Also, I eat a lot, so. Um, Damn. <laughs> it's, a, so, so, it's it, you just have to decide that <laughs> this is something I want to do, and you wake up every day. I have decided a decision. Let me give you an example. Okay. Can you go a day without brushing your teeth? 
Nah, I do it twice a day. Good. Mm -hmm. It's a decision you have made. Yeah. If you don't brush your teeth, you don't feel all right. Yeah. That's how I feel about working out. Nah, you see, <laughs> brush. Your teeth. Because you don't have to do it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to brush your teeth every yeah. day. You don't. You're not required. But then I to talk to it. people, so I have to. By the gym, you, I don't. Yes, but I don't you, show my. When you work out, mm -hmm. the benefits are not just physical. Okay. Your interactions with people actually improves and increases. You are nicer because you you get more endorphins mm. and you are generally in a better mood in a better place in your mind and in your body and all damn i have a and the truth is when you start seeing the results mm. you become addicted so you have to put in the work to see the result yes. then it will actually motivate yes. you that is where i have a problem and you don't have to get up and go to the gym you can just walk in your neighborhood you don't have to shop for new clothes and combination and i see people say i want to work out and the first thing they want to do is make sure their shoes are matching their tops and they yes. want to shop no that's not where it starts from because gym culture is fashion <laughs> it's part of it okay. you know it comes with it mm. but that's not the aim mm. yeah Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'll start working on myself. Uh, I can't <laughs> live like this because now nah, it's too But much. you look really good. Le should I show you my you, stomach? No, please don't. Don't you, do that. You, okay. <laughs> it's sad, though. It's sad. It's, 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 it's sad. But I have to go to the gym and work okay. out. You know? Anyway, so <laughs> the last time I came to your show, you asked me a question about the Ghana movie industry. Did I? Yes. You said, what is my take on the Ghana movie industry? Today, I'm flipping the question. Okay. Ghana movie industry. Now, I shall call as a stakeholder, as someone <laughs> who is, you know, in it. Talk to me. What is happening? What's happening or yeah. what's my take? What is your take and what is happening? Because you are uh, in it. Yes, I am. I'm actually on set now for To Have and To Hold okay. um, with Ivan Kwashiga's farmhouse for Aquaba Magic DSTV. It's going pretty well. Um... When COVID hit, the industry suffered. Mm. But thanks to platforms like Aquaba Magic and DSTV, who mm. pumped some money into the industry, commissioning new projects mm. and licensing new projects, a lot of us and a lot of people in the industry are now actively working and are busy. Mm. Um, you saw or you heard about Dede, which yeah, was yeah. the first ever telenovela to hit our screens with over 300 episodes. Yeah. I, I thought it was amazing mm. and a great first step after um the fall from covid mm. and since then i think we've been picking up very nicely okay. and we're doing well so um i don't about um are we producing more for theater or more people are now going on networks and you know streaming platforms because most of the content that are coming out people i don't think people are producing for um like you know there there are times that people like we're producing movies you see the cds and we have transitioned to this era but then with regards to let's say streaming platforms people are not even the netflix i don't know if it is the con the quality of our content because mostly you see the content on youtube well when you said i was producing for theater did you mean cinemas cinema yeah okay um i think all producers differ or yeah, vary. Yeah. I think the ultimate aim for most production houses or producers will mm. be for the world to see your film. Mm. And as creative people like yourself, mm. you would agree with me. Um, this is, might be an unpopular opinion, mm. but when you produce creative work, your biggest goal is for people to see it. Mm. You just want the world to see it. Mm. Sometimes you don't think too much about what you get from it. You just want people to see it. Mm. That's why you find that people do quality, excellent work. They're not getting money to promote it, so they just put it out there for free. Okay. And then everybody just has it and, and sees it. Mm. It's the truth. That's how we feel because our work is, like it or not, very emotional, mm. sometimes more emotional than economic or business. Mm. That's why a lot of creative people are now hiring business managers and people who take care of the business aspect of things. Mm. So to answer your question, we are producing. Yeah. And and depending on where the producer is in their business and mentally, mm. they may want to put it on streaming platforms or even on YouTube now mm. and just let people see it and they get pay-per-view, mm. really. Well, I, um, also, um, with, um, in comparison with the, let's say, the Nigerian content on Netflix, if you do a comparative analysis, I think, I don't know if it's because they have... Um, um, Net, uh, Netflix is headquartered in yep. their country yep. or they, you know, they have the numbers or they do seem to have like the upper hand when it comes to, you know, putting content on that platform. Ours is limited. What yes. could be the issue? Um, it is limited, but we cannot close our eyes to the numbers game. Okay. Nigeria is a big market. Mm. Very big. A big market means they produce more. Mm. Producing more means that they make more money. Mm. Making more money means they will be able to produce 
more um they'll be able to put in more money into their production mm. putting more money in usually means that you're mm. going to be getting a certain standard of quality which will be great for whatever platform Ghanaians are doing same or are trying to do same we've got side chick gang on netflix we've got away bars on netflix the perfect picture film was on netflix mm. <clears throat> we are putting our films on netflix we are trying given mm. the resources that are available to us mm. And the fact that, you know, we are a, a small country doing our very best. Mm. And I think on the continent, actually, Ghanaian films are doing well. Mm. Um, I travel to some African countries and they are, I don't expect people to recognize me or know me at all. Like I was in Egypt and somebody was talking to me about the perfect picture film. Mm. It's like, oh, it's you, it's you. I was like, yeah. Um, were you in Ghana? Mm. And she said, no. She saw the film and she's in Egypt and, you know, other, other places. And so I think that even though the Nigerians have put out more mm. and may seem to be doing better, um, comparatively, given our numbers and the resources available to us, Ghanaian filmmakers are doing very well. Okay. Then <clears throat> there are people out there who assert that when it comes to storyline and quality, we are not there yet. Who are those? general consensus on the internet i have not heard that you have seen i think in terms of storyline and story quality line. we are amazing you think we Ghanians are, are great storytellers okay. i have seen Ghanaian films that have left me feeling like i was in there like, generally when i watch a film i'm looking at the camera angles and continuity and where her makeup was she was wearing pink lipstick here it's, mm. it's more pink when she entered a room looking for continuity and mm. something changed. like i can't help myself mm. But there are Ghanaian films that when I watch, mm. I feel a part of it. I feel the emotions that the director was trying to elicit from the viewer. Like mm. I feel a part of it. And I know a film is good personally when I'm able to feel like I felt it, mm. you know, rather than looking at the camera angles and the rest, because I do that way too much. Mm. So in terms of quality, storyline, picture, acting, mm. I think Ghanaians have got it. Mm. I think our industry has got it. Mm. And if we get the right investment, we will be able to do so much more than our competitors. So investment, um, support mm -hmm. from, let's say, um, the government, the Creative Arts Council. Um, are we getting this as a, I mean, do, do, first of all, do they see the need for, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how to put this thing, but there is also an assertion that the, our, mu um, our movie industry is, you know, they exist. Like, really? It, yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That's an unfortunate accession to yeah. have because it does exist and it's doing well. It's doing well? Yeah. Do we have the backings and support of um, from, you know, these stakeholders? That well, um, I cannot speak to that um, with a lot of authority because I've not personally reached out to anyone. Mm. But from what I know and the little that I see, mm. I know that the GTA, for example, mm. is supporting the industry. Mm. At least for theater, I know. Okay. Because um, nowadays I'm quite invested in theater. Okay. So I know that the GTA gives us support, mm. you know, and they are interested. Mm. They are concerned about the industry. Mm. They attend our programs. They come and they, they watch. Do? Yeah. They come and they watch mm. and they give us suggestions. They give us their platforms to use. Mm. So I would say from that aspect that mm. um, we are getting support. However, there's more that can be done really. Um, elsewhere, we've heard about major policies mm. that helped industries turn around. Mm. For example, there was a time in Nigeria where primetime only showed local content mm. and home videos. That is how, or that's one of the ways mm. um, through which their industry bloomed and more and more people became conscious about consuming local content. Mm. We can do the same here. I, I mean, in terms of policy direction, mm. we can. There can be... Um, some a, a, an affirmative action of a sort to mm. decide that you know what prime time we will show only local content mm. we are not showing any of our any foreign content we're not going to be playing any foreign music if if you listen to radio or television between the hours of 6 a.m to 10 a.m again between 1 p.m and 4 p.m drive time evening we are going to be playing only local music we're only going to be showing mm. kumawood movies shelly from poor Manso's movies movies from our um our industry it's going to increase the demand for our content. Mm. We're going to make more money. We're going to be able to produce more. But do we have and resources to produce more? So it starts from somewhere. Mm. First, you must create the demand. Okay. You must put you know, content into the system. People must see it, appreciate it, and want it. Mm. And then we can create more. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, the transition from being on screen to stage, walk me through it. How, at what point did that happen? Um, what actually, you know, 
um, got you into um, stage plays? So I've been a theater lover all my life, okay. really, since I was in Sunday school oh. when we did Mary and Joseph in church. Mm. And I always wanted a big role like Mary or something. I was always the goat or, you know, like the sheep. Was it, the sheep, the sheep that went to the major. Mm. <laughs> like, I never got to, you know, I always wanted to mm. do something yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, I was a quiet child when I, when I was younger. I was very talkative. Um, you? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was always buried in my books. I like to read. I was always in the corner reading or just, you know. So I always wanted a role, but because of my general disposition, I never got, mm. you know. So I loved to watch. Mm. Um, I remember when I left secondary school and went to JIJ, I used to take Trotro to the University of Ghana so I could go and watch stage plays at the School of Performing Arts. Mm. And I was happiest when I was there, mm. watching people on stage do magic. It was magical to me mm. because the whole thing is a choreography. Mm. Like once the person le steps left and another person steps right and three people step left, right at the same time, like, how did they do that? Mm. Because I would watch, it's usually more than one show, mm. the first show and then there's a second show. Mm. I'd watch both shows. And in both shows, I realized the movements were exactly the same. Mm. Like they didn't memorize three hours of movement mm. in addition to their lines. Mm. How are they saying the lines? Is someone telling them, how do you know all of this? How are you able to just cram all of that in your head? Mm. I, I always wondered. Mm. So I was always so fascinated by theater. Mm. And so when I um, did a perfect picture film in 2009, yeah. um, Shelley from Home perfect picture film, after that, I got a call from one Karim mm. saying that he wanted to stage a play called The Vagina Monologues and he wanted me to be part of it. I'm like, what the actual what? The Vagina Monologues, Chronicles of the Penis. Have you seen it? Yes. So I thought, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's very, what? <laughs> 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 I'm like I come. I go to the Church of Pentecost. You want me to come and do what? And they will demote you to the back. You, <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused. Mm. In fact, for a moment there, I felt like he was being um, disrespectful because mm. I didn't know anything about the vagina monologues at the time. So, being who I am, mm. curious and um, always looking for a challenge, mm. I said, "Can you send me the script? I'd like to take a look at it." So I went to this big fat script, like really huge. And then he said, Lydia Forsing was also in it. I was like, oh, Lydia, all right, mm. sister in, let's take a look. And Lydia said, oh, I've seen this play many times. It's very it's popular on mm. campus. So then I opened it and the first line was, my vagina is angry. <laughs> and I, said, I said, I don't think I can do this. I'm hey, sorry, I am not doing it. I see my vagina. That's, that's the line. It's a line. In the, so I said, no, 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 no. This, this is one it, over me. Mm. I, I don't think I can do this play. It's, mm. It was just a bit much mm. for me. Mm. And then Lydia said, read the script. Okay. And so I said, okay. I read the script. Mm. And after reading it, I found that it was an amazing story. Mm. You know, it, it's like many women telling various stories about their lives mm. and their partners. Mm. It was really, it's really, it wasn't, it's not even profane, mm. you know. And it's called the vagina monologues because among other things, one of the words that women cannot pronounce with their mouths is vagina, even though you have one, you know, we just can't say it. Mm. So it, it kind of, I think doing that play was, was big for me among other things, aside learning lines and being on stage, mm. but a whole discovery about things about women. I was just 19 years old at the time when mm. I did Perfect Picture and then did the, um, the, the Vagina Moonlocks. And everyone else was in their 20s or something. And so they were more exposed and older than me. Mm. So it, it, I think it introduced me to a, a whole like, different way of thinking and appreciating women okay. and relationships and partners and so on. Okay. So that's how it started. Okay. I did the Vagina Monologues at the National Theatre mm -hmm. on stage mm. for the first time. It's, uh, it's about two and a half hours. The lines are many. Mm. We're required to memorize all of it. Mm. That, that's when I realized that, oh, they actually memorize the whole book, the mm. whole book. And on, it, on stage or in theatre, you don't just learn your lines. You learn everybody's lines mm. because you need to know their lines to mm. be able to deliver your lines. Mm. It's give and take. If you don't know my line, if I say it, you don't know that it's time for you to say your line. Okay. So you have to learn mine as well. Also, if I forget my line and I, I freeze... The, the play has to continue. Yeah. So if you don't know my line and I freeze, what's going to happen? So basically, you must know mine. So okay. if something happens to me, I freeze, I fall, I can't continue. You will continue okay. on my behalf. Okay. Somehow. So skill set wise, comparatively, mm -hmm. on, on stage, on screen, which one, is, which one is more demanding? Stage. Stage. Are you kidding? 
I mean, I'm just so asking. this is a pre recorded show. Yeah, if I make a mistake now, I can just say, Please, I beg, can we start again? Okay, that's film. We'll start again, mm -hmm. we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. If the director doesn't feel it, the mm -hmm. director will say, Nah, let's do it again this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you don't seem all right, you need a break. Mm -hmm. Can we take five? Get her to get into it. Mm. Then we do it again. It still doesn't work. Mm. Let's close it. Let's do it again. Let's let's come back tomorrow because it's not working. Mm. That's film. Mm. But on stage, you have one chance. One take is live. Mm. If you goof, you have goofed. If you flop, you have flopped. Mm. There's no second take. Okay. There's no opportunity to do it again. Mm. It's just once and that's it. And so stage is more de demanding. Mm. Film is more exciting. Mm. I love film because it gives me the opportunity to try again. Mm. You know, film allows you to try again. And you, you are sure that what you get at the end of the day, the film that comes out, is your best take. Mm. But for stage, you don't, you, don't, you don't get that chance. So, with, I mean, with the two, which one do you, I mean, where do you, I mean, lean towards? Which one do you prefer? Ah, in terms of output, mm. I prefer film because okay. it gives you the opportunity to give your best. Okay. In terms of a challenge and, you know, challenging myself to be more and do more, mm. I like the stage mm. because it teaches me to prepare. It, it teaches me to work on my public speaking skills. Mm. It teaches me to learn how to work with other people. It mm. teaches me to connect with people and look people in the eye, mm. you know. So when I'm on stage, I look at you and I talk to you and I elicit some kind of response or emotion from you mm. film doesn't do that it's to the mm. camera or to one person you know do we as Ghanaians understand the concept of stage play or plays? i think we are getting there okay i think we're getting there mm. so um after all my rounds at the school of performing arts i started working at the national theater mm. as an usher um while i was in school to basically support myself so ghana at 50 secretariat um, during the celebrations opened the national theater mm for daily productions by Ibi Bigoma. Mm. And I used to work at the theater at the time. Every time I went to the theater, I watched the plays. And again, because I was working, I watched all four shows. Mm. I remember a particular production by, or featuring Fifi Coleman. The title was A Dilemma of a Ghost. Mm. It was while watching Dilemma of a Ghost that I decided that I would be on stage one day. Mm. The sad thing though, was that half of the time, the theater at the time sat 1,500 people, minus about 10 or 20. Oftentimes, there were about 10 people in the theater or 20 people. Damn. The theater will be half empty. And the actors will be on stage delivering their lines with enthusiasm. Mm. And I wonder, but people are not here. Mm. Why, are they, why are they so, like, where are they getting the energy from? Mm. If I came out on stage and saw 10 people, I'll be brokenhearted. Mm. Imagine uploading your video and getting five views. Uh, uh, like, goodness, I put in so much work. True. What, what can I, why are people not watching, mm. you know? But they will stand on stage and they will continue with the vim for two hours. Mm. And I mean, I've seen a production where there were two people because it was raining and the rain stopped and it was time to go. People didn't come because I thought they thought it would rain. Two of us in the theater. I seen two people watching. Two human beings. <laughs> God damn it. And you know, they delivered from start to finish. Mm. And then came James Sable White mm. with Unhappy Wives, Confused Husbands. That was the first show I watched at the theater. And then again, I was working. Mm. The theater was full. Mm. I'd never seen so many people at the theater aside for Ghana Music Awards or Miss Malika. Mm. And so I wondered where the people were from. How did he do it? How, how is the theater full? What's he doing right? I got interested. I watched all his productions, like all of them. And I'll come for the first show, second show, third show, fourth show. And I always hoped that I could go and talk to him and ask him to cast me or something. Mm. You know, it, it was, I was always so marveled by it. And then, but then again, I've been an ardent follower of Ebo White since River Reports Monthly on Joy FM mm. in those days. Yeah. I, I have all the River Reports books. I have all of them. I used to go for Joy Bride Outfit just so I could buy River Report. So, I, like, I was a fan, yeah. basically. Fast forward, COVID hit. The theaters weren't open. A lot of people lost interest. And then we came back. The struggle began. People were incoming. Mm. And then slowly began to build up. I did run for your wife with George Quay. We did a detective calls. Mm. And then Latif Abubakar invited me to do a monologue, a one woman show called Five Hours with Mario. It's a Spanish production. Mm. When he called me, I said, Latif, let this cup pass me by. A one woman show, as in me alone on stage for mm. two and a half hours, mm. reciting lines and acting, and people would not get bored. He said, yes. I said, I'm not a comedian. Is it a comedy? He said, no. It's about a woman whose husband dies. And during the week, she sacks everybody. 
and she stays alone with her husband and she talks to him for five hours. That's the play. I said, what? And you think people will come and watch this? He said, I think so. I said, I will not do it. Yeah. I don't think. Call someone who has trained as an actor in the theater because I don't have any training. Mm. I'm sure they are better suited to do this. But he insisted. I said, let me pray about it. Mm. So I prayed and I prayed and I came back and said, okay, I am the one who says, said I like a good challenge. This is a challenge. Let's do it. And so we came to the theater and there was a coffin on the stage because it's a way keeping, mm. you know, and there's a corpse in the coffin and I'm on stage with this corpse. So the lights come on and it's a deeply emotional play. I mean, to, to practice for this play, I had to turn off my life. Like my, my husband and my, 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 my kids were even out of town. So it was great for me at the time. I was alone, buried and soaked in this, trying to be sad, mm. learning to be sad, learning to be sad deeply sad mm. learning to cry learning to cry with boogers coming out of your nose mm. learning to be deeply deeply sad and confused mm. it took me about two weeks to do this even mm. though i needed about six months to do it i learned my lines were hesitant and everything mm. when i came on stage sheldon uh, the scene opens with a lot of darkness so you don't see anyone when i came on stage and the lights came on there were people standing the auditorium was so full that people were standing. People were sitting on the stairs. Like when you enter the conference center, there are stairs. People were sitting. Mm. People were bringing in white plastic chairs to sit down. The place was full. Too full. Me and Shemi. Mama, I made it. When I opened my eyes, <laughs> you know, the beginning, like I'm crying, I'm weeping, I'm on the floor holding my stomach and I get up and I breathe and I begin talking. So in getting up and breathing and opening my eyes, sure. it's like, I needed a moment. And at that time, Latif and everyone on the crew, they were all worried. I saw Uncle Fred and Mugi sitting there because he's seen my rehearsal. Because as soon as I opened my eyes, I talk. But when I opened my eyes, I was like... And I knew that Latif was, at that moment, with all the conversations we had had about, I can't do it, I can't do it. I was sure he was thinking, oh my God, did she freeze? Are we in trouble? But I was in shock. And I was like, it was, I was, it was shock and appreciation and happiness. And mama, I made this moment. Mm. So I took in that moment in five seconds. I let in, out a breath and then I began saying my lines mm. for two and a half hours. Sheldon, it was at that moment that I felt that, you know what? Maybe I was born to do this. Maybe this is it. This is, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm. I mean, I say it with all of the humility I can gather, but this is it. Humility no do not. I was so, I was so, I, I, I was so happy. Yeah. I was so I mean, I was crying, but yeah. I was happy. And I felt it in my stomach. And, you know, I was thinking, I wish Shelly could see me, Shelly from Poor yeah. Because she and I, I mean, when I, she, she was the first to, to cast me and in, in, the, in the Perfect Picture film and subsequently. The, I had many scenes where I was supposed to be sad. And Shelly would try to help me as a director. Like, nah, hasn't anything happened in your life that you can think about that will make you sad? I'm like, Shelly, I can't. I'm not sad. I'm not a sad person. <laughs> I just, I couldn't find, I couldn't find, I couldn't do it. Mm. And it was a struggle she had had with me for long. Mm. While I was on stage, I was like, I wish Shelly could see me right now. Mm. Because, you know, I think I've grown as an actor. Mm. And I've been able to be able to tap into the various emotions that a human being can feel. Mm. And that play helped me to bring it all out. And so to answer your question, we are beginning to understand theater and we are beginning to appreciate it. Yes. It was at that moment that I felt that this is it that we have something here mm. it's going to work and it was not a local production it was a local production by a spanish play mm. and there were about 15 embassies and ambassadors represented in the auditorium mm. so it was a mixed audience and when it ended and they all got up and they were clapping for more than one minute continuous i knew that i had worked mm. i was happy i genuinely began to cry and you know you've had a good show if after the show people are not leaving because mm. it was a 4 p.m show and it ended around 6 30 and i was supposed to get ready for 8 p.m and the people were still there they weren't going i wanted to go backstage because i had been talking for two and a half hours and drinking beer like six bottles of beer on stage wait hold so on i was wait, like <laughs> come here, come here, come here. you drank there oh yeah because she 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 was at a weight keeping and she was mad you know like her husband is lying there she hates the man that is just acting though you don't drink beer on a normal day i don't drink beer okay i actually don't drink any alcohol at all so after i was i was i was i was tapped out i needed to get out of the auditorium but people were there and they weren't going and they wanted to talk and ask me how it was and i was half of the time just looking at them like you know, and I, i'm like 
Mm. Can I go, please? Mm. But of course you can't go because yeah. there are all these ambassadors yeah. who have graced the occasion with yeah. their presence. Yeah. So yeah, so so we we are there, Sheldon. Yeah. We are there, and it's so nice to see. And I'm so happy that this dream I had as a little girl trying to be Mary, mm. you know, at the Church of Pentecost Sunday School. To see Joseph. <laughs> So we've come so far mm. and I'm so happy to have been the first person to do a monologue, mm. one woman show, acting a one woman show in Ghana and there's a demand for it and I can't wait for us to do it again. So has there ever been like, mama, this one, they haven't made it moment, like you entered an auditorium and like, ah, Charlie, you probably to regard the father, the son. <laughs> Sheldon, there have been many of those times. Mm. There have been many of those times, mm. especially when I entered the production. Mm. So before I was just acting, but mm. now I produce. Okay. So when i started producing there were many times before the show opens i'll call my cast backstage and i'll say guys mm. it's possible that we'll go out there mm. and there'll be four people in the auditorium mm. your parents and two people who got free tickets mm. it doesn't matter those two people are your audience mm. you must give them a show that will make them talk about it and want to come back mm. and I, I do this all the time even when i'm acting too i call every before i say guys it's possible we'll go out there mm. and we will not have a full house but it doesn't matter mm. Because when you're acting, you're not acting to the house. You're acting mm. to each person individually because everybody goes home with an individual experience. Mm. So it's like when you're talking on TV or radio, you're yeah. not talking to the world. You're talking to each listener. Yeah. That's why you say good morning to my listener, yeah. not to, to my listeners. Because okay. it's an individual experience for everyone. Yeah. And everyone must go home feeling that you acted for them. Mm. And to carry that attitude onto the stage and do it for each person individually. Mm single them out even if the auditorium is full mm. you often single someone out and talk to them and that's all that matters mm. we go on the stage and there aren't many people mm. but with that mindset you still give them a good show okay it's happened so many times okay so um infrastructure um mostly the show um the plays are centered in accra uh because okay accra we have the facilities or we have the facility looking at um other regions other you know locations where the, those people over there who don't have the facilities how do you people you know you, i mean i don't think you want to just um do place only in accra you want to go to kumasi you want to go to sunyane tamale these people they don't have the infrastructure how then do you plan to you know extend this kind of you know this beautiful work that people are doing to some of these people and also do you people have the support because um as i said it requires a lot of you know investment however you want to see it, human resources, anything that you want to marshal up to, you know, get your, the content out there to the people. Do you people have the backers? Do you people have the support? Anything? Sheldon is hard. Hard. It's so hard. It's discouraging. But I wouldn't lie to you. Mm -hmm. The audience, mm -hmm. the people who come, to the people who buy tickets to come see the show give us so much hope mm. because they are buying the tickets and they are coming. We do have some support. Um, for example, April Communications and Image Bureau mm. have partnered in recent times to produce a lot of plays. Mm. And we get sponsorship support from sponsors like um, Stambic Bank, from the GTA, the GTA supports mm. us, um, many other companies. Mm. Theater is expensive mm. because you pretty much have to build everything. The stage, the set, pay the cast. It's more expensive to pay the cast in theater because it's live and mm. they have to be on their feet for so long and they have to do so many shows in a short period. Mm. You have to pay for technical production. You have to pay for publicity. Mm. You have to pay for everything. Mm. And so in terms of sponsorship and support, we need so much more. Mm. So much more than we're getting. But we also recognize and appreciate the fact that this is something that we are now getting used to as a people mm. and we have to continue to do the work so that we continue to get the support and a time will come where we'll have all the support we need and so much more. Mm. And so that's fine. We're happy to grow. We're happy to, you know, go through the process until we get to the place where we're supposed to be or we want to get to. Okay. So that's quite all right. Okay. Um, in terms of people coming to see the place, I can't say this enough. People will sometimes think that if you haven't seen a play, I, I think people who haven't seen plays, I don't know what they think, but until you see it, you will not appreciate it. Okay. So I always tell people, come and see one. Just come see one. Mm. And after that, you probably get hooked. Mm. Also, people think that it's always comedy. Yeah. You know, it's always a more jokey jokey. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not always comedy. Mm. I know Ghanaians are stressed and we're always looking for like an avenue to, 
you know de-stress laugh. and yeah. laugh and so we we do some like, run for your wife was hilarious it's actually one of the most hilarious stage plays in the world mm. it's a british play which we did mm. and and so people expect it to be funny all the time mm. but we're growing mm. and we have to appreciate the various types of theater there are mm. there's dance theater there are musicals there there's suspense mm. there's comedy um you see what chief Moomin is doing yeah you know um you see what latifa bubakar is doing mm. you see what someone like um in, in support the Nyan support team does and then you come to what april communications and image bureau does they're all different types of theater mm. a detective calls for example what we are staging on the 3rd and 4th of june is not a comedy mm. it's not funny at all mm. it's it's intense it's a lot of suspense but interestingly the last time we staged, people were laughing and I was wondering, a lot of times on stage, people start laughing and then we all on stage, like the actors, look at each other and wonder whether someone has fallen or what's funny. Maybe because delivery. we haven't said anything that's funny. <laughs> what might not so, be funny to you might be funny to someone. I know, we have come to learn now yeah. that when we rehearse in our office mm. and we think we are so serious, we are not that serious. Exactly. <laughs> like you sit here presenting hour of the day and people are laughing. Like I'm talking about, you know, the, the CD depreciation. Why are you laughing? Yeah. You know, but I think it's the thing about Ghanaians. We mm. find a way to find humor. Coping mechanism. In the most difficult situations. That's why we're still here strong. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so um, return on investment. Is it worth it? We're getting there. We're not quite there yet. Mm. But we're getting there. I think one thing that you need to be able to thrive is in this industry is belief in your product. Okay. True. Yeah. We believe in our product. Mm. We believe in what we're doing. Mm. We think we're onto something. Mm. And so we have the patience to wait and see it through. Now, what are you working on now? What is, what is in the pipeline now? We're what, working on a what play. What is in the theaters now? It's called A Detective Calls. A Detective Calls. It's this one. No, K. No, okay. this is K, uh, look, like Michael Kors, no. Okay. So this one is C A L L S. Okay. As in to call on someone. Okay. It's a fancy way to say I'll visit you. I'll call on you. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So a detective calls. Mm. It's a play about life, mm. about our conscience mm. and the way we treat people. Mm. It's a play which teaches us that the various things that we say and the many interactions we have with people every day contributes to the kind of day that they will have. Mm. Or whether or not they'll wake up the next morning mm. i'll just give you a couple of examples in in, in our everyday life mm. so you're driving you get to the traffic light some kid comes to knock on you we're like no mm, get, get out of here mm. and then the mother is like <laughs> you know <laughs> you know we, we do that i yeah, mean you we, see that happen all the time yeah. you know a woman comes with her child on her back yeah. and one in front of you like mm. you yeah. know you get to the office you're trying to enter somewhere the security man is standing there you're like can't you see me mm. like open the gates mm. you don't know what's what's happening with him personally or mm. what he's thinking about mm. maybe he was contemplating suicide that morning mm. but he found the courage to come to work and then he called him a useless man mm. this man is probably going to go home and drink that poison that he was contemplating because mm. he has gotten the confirmation that he is in fact useless mm. you know a girl is sitting in the office she's put her head on the table and your first thought is she's lazy the lazy girl this girl has probably just had an abortion mm something tragic has happened you don't know what's happening with her mm. and she's probably f full of regret or remorse or is questioning her, her herself mm. you don't know what people are going through and so it's important that you're just kind to people or just ignore them okay. let them let them go okay. don't say anything mm. because your words your actions and inactions mm. can contribute to lead someone mm. To the biggest tragedy of their lives mm. so the play is about a family mother father daughter son and boyfriend please don't tell them <laughs> uh, I, I, I will say the whole thing yeah but um okay i, I, won't, I won't tell the story of the, mm -hmm. of the play but this play is very intriguing i love it because the main character the lead role the person about whom the play is about never comes on stage so it's different and it affords you the viewer the opportunity to make this character into whoever you expect or imagine her to be in your mind so i have to be a critical thinker to come and watch it like bro i have to come <laughs> and sit there and do something you, you must be someone who will not be on your phone every five minutes oh okay because people go to the because cinema if you now. come and you sit down mm. and you put your phone down mm. You would leave a different person. Oftentimes, when we finish the plays and, and we finish, people get up the club and they're like, hey, Charlie, the play was good. And they're mm, walking out. Mm. High five. You're like, let's take pictures. But after this play, most people just work, work out very quietly. Mm. People are quiet mm. when the play ends. They get up, they clap, and then they start walking out. Mm. 
people aren't laughing or talking. You know, it changes you. It ch it's changed me. Mm. I remember during rehearsals, one of our, our, our lead actors, Akofe Jan, he said, now, nah, I fired one of my girls who was misbehaving, but after reading the script, I, I want to call her and find out how she's doing. I mean, I'm not going to take her back, but I just need to call on her and see how she's doing because this play has got me thinking about the way I treated her. Mm. And it's done the same to me. Mm. It's done the same to all of us. And a lot of the reviews we got after the play were very critical. Um, theater is supposed to tell us the stories of our lives and also lead us to change our habits and attitudes. Mm. Theater is a great tool for social change. Sure. And I think this play helps us do that. And it's it's altogether very exciting for me. So you people are intentional with some of these things, like this um th this placement, like oh, at the end of the day, this is what we are trying to achieve with this body of work. So the writing is, you know, geared towards that kind of angle. Yes. So if you want to be comical, you go comical. Yeah. So you are intentional with yeah. the writing. Yeah. Okay. You write yeah. your place yourself or you have so we usually do adaptations. Okay. So a, a Detective Calls is an adapt adaptation of an Inspector Calls. It's a 1965 British play, oh, okay. which we have adapted for the local audience. Okay. Um, last time we staged it, we, we had the honor of having the Ghana Police Service support us. Mm. So the IGP was there mm. with a lot of his people. Mm. And after the play, they came to us and said, that was a play. Mm. And you know, that's, that's, I don't know, approval from the IGP meant so much to us. Because mm. we were a little jittery, you know, play, with the, because it's a police detective mm. in the play. And we were concerned about the representation of the detective, mm. you know, Ghana police. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it went amazingly well. Mm. And we had their backing and support. Um, we had some of our ministers of state in the house, mm. a lot of industry players. I must say the support we've had has been really encouraging. Mm. And we want more people to come and see it. Would you say with the conversation that we have had, you are looking at a certain demographic, target audience. Is your play for a certain demographic, a certain audience, a certain age class? I don't know. It's a family play. Okay. It's a family play. It comes with every play or this is like... So you know. this this particular play is a family play. Okay. Run for Your Wife was rated 18. Okay. But this is a family play. We, we had some children in the house, very young children. Mm. One of the children, about six years old, came to me after the play and asked me, are you a child? I mm. said, no. Mm. She said, why were you crying so much? I said, I wasn't. She said, okay. I like the play. I said, thank you. What did you learn from it? She said, be nice to people. I said, whoa. She's just about six years old. She was, she was right in the front. So this is a family play. Um, it is for anyone who can put their phone down for two hours to watch mm. a play. Okay. Once you can do that, okay. you will thoroughly enjoy the play. Mm. Yes. June 3rd, June 4th. Yes. June 4th, detective. June mm. 4th. I mean... <laughs> it's not a soldier calls. It's a detective calls. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. where can people get tickets? Like, how is the ticketing like? So our tickets are out on imagebureau.com, okay. imagebureaugh.com. Mm. Um, nowadays, we are encouraging soft tickets okay. as opposed to hard tickets. Mm. And we're saving the environment. Mm. So um, You are saving it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, mm. a lot of Ghanaians like to collect their hard copy tickets. Yes, we have to, to show it. They like to show yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, a lot of people buy the hard um, copy tickets help us with with media and advertising because they often post it yeah they post it which is nice mm. if you want to buy a ticket mm -hmm. i hope you want to buy a ticket please dial star 713 star 101 hash mm. star 713 star one, one. Zero one hash. Bass, bass, That's all. Bass. Yeah, you, you, you can kind of wrap with it. Mm. Star seven one three star Scrap, one zero Scrap, one Scrap. hash. That's it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so get your tickets. <laughs> or you can go to the airport shell. You can come to the National Theatre to okay. buy um, right. if you want a hard copy. How we much are they going for? One hundred and fifty Ghana CDs oh, only. Yes, yes. one hundred and fifty more with Sky. Yeah, one hundred and fifty yeah. okay. fried rice. Then fried how rice. long is the play? It's two hours long. Two hours. Yes. So two hours uh, if you go, I carry your hanky to ABI before and you ask, you know, I wipe your tears. Yeah. And All right. Thanks for having this conversation with me. Thank you for having me. This has uh, been fun. You're yes. so cool, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm cool. And you that. look so much nicer in person. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you mean by look? You're really <laughs> handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I have made it to life. Yeah, you have a very nice complexion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nah. Okay, okay. You have heard me. <laughs>
when she leaves every book camera started and tell me nonsense yeah. now, okay which camera i'm a nice person look yeah. at my skin color bro yeah. anyway thanks for uh passing through i appreciate your time thank you for having waiting me waiting for our tickets yes but, i shall send you tickets yeah. okay we are going to, i'm going to buy five tickets oh thank you i'll do giveaway for the audience we have to support local theater and production we appreciate this thank you you're a nice guy yes thank you I keep saying i'm a nice guy <laughs> my, my would head... you like a feature in one of our plays yes okay i've done movie before oh yes, okay two okay two movies um but they gave me like three seconds appearance oh what pass come and stand there <laughs> shout and go i will never forgive prince the blue for that <laughs> <laughs> anyway thanks for passing through thank you um, for we appreciate me. your time pleasure is mine Be well.